It's uh, it's just been an odd start to December. You know, Denver got its first snowfall of the season today, the latest they've ever seen there. They had a 232 day streak without snow in Denver. So it's it's been warm for a lot of us across the country. And uh, it's going to stay that way today. Now, things do change tomorrow. The aquifer is down four tenths of a foot to 662.2 in your pollen count. Mount Cedar, it jumped up into the moderate category today. 480, molds are low at 370. Cold front moves in tonight. We'll talk about those changes coming up. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by IAQ Cleaning. Hi, my name is Gilbert Ramirez, and I am with IAQ Experts. I want to give the military and say thank you for your service. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Y todos los veteranos y todos del servicio, felicidades. Gracias por su servicio. Okay, so yes, mm -hmm. just in case you, you can't tell, it's December. <laughs> it's the Christmas holiday season. Mm -hmm. And we may hit, what, 85 degrees today? Still got to mow your yard. Yeah. <laughs> We're still there. We're in yeah. growing season. Uh, yeah, everything's still green. Uh, temperatures are going to be <laughs> warm today. Now, there is going to be a cool down this weekend, so we'll get some relief. But it's fleeting because by next week, we're right back into this pattern. Uh, forecast high for today here in San Antonio is 84. That's what we're going with. The record is 85, so we're going to be right there close to it. That was set back in 1939, by the way. Forecast high in Del Rio today. We're forecasting 88. Record's 86. So. Uh, records could be broken there. And Del Rio is going to get close to its all-time December high. There will be some 90s on the map. Uh, pretty incredible to see here in mid-December. Here's what we're thinking this afternoon. 91 Carrizo Springs, 93 in Catula. Two of the hot spots. Uh, 84 here in town. You'll get 80s even in the hill country now that the sun is out. But by tomorrow morning, we get those drastic changes. We're in the mid-50s. Gusty northerly wind. It'll feel very, very different. And by tomorrow afternoon, highs will only be in the low 60s, if that. And we'll still have some of those breezy winds in place. So there, there is going to be a, sort of a nice change if you're looking for some cooler weather this weekend. And Sunday mornings certainly will be cold. Here's a look at the time lapse. We did start off with some fog and drizzle this morning. And then uh, you can see some of the, the droplets there on the screen. But now the sun is out and temperatures have been really trending upward. 78 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 68, so it's still very humid. And that cloud deck is quickly shrinking. There's still some clouds over San Antonio, but there's already some breaks in the uh, next couple of hours. We should see quite a bit of sun and certainly a lot of sun out west. Temperatures are reflecting that 75 in Uvalde, 81 Creosote Springs, 83 already in Catula, 84 Kennedy and uh, 76 up there in Fredericksburg. This is out ahead of that cold front, which is starting to make its way into Texas. In addition to that, we've got quite a bit of moisture. Dew points are in the upper 60s. It is sticky out there. There's even dew points in the 70s in places like Gonzales, LaGrange, and Victoria. And this moisture is getting pulled northward out ahead of the storm system. This, by the way, is going to set the stage for some strong storms this afternoon. Not here, but to our north and east. And there could be some uh, pretty significant severe weather. A few showers across parts of Oklahoma. You see the snow. We talked about that up near Denver. That is that storm system, and there's going to be some gusty winds in the Panhandle today as that front moves in. Red flag warnings, wind advisories in place. It's possible that we could get some wind advisories issued for our area tomorrow as this front comes through. And then I mentioned the severe weather. The threat for that is going to be far east Texas in the places like Memphis and Arkansas. You get up into Missouri. There is a moderate risk of severe weather. You don't see that too often in December. But there's going to be some strong storms up there a little bit later today. So that's going to be a problem spot for us. Sky's clear and then out ahead of that front, we get the warm temperatures front comes through tonight. This is around 2 a.m. We've got a broken line of showers, maybe a storm, but I think it's generally east of San Antonio. Then by tomorrow morning, still some clouds lingering. Gusty winds have kicked in and then the clouds will thin out a little bit as we get into tomorrow afternoon, but still on the cool side. And we mentioned those winds, some gusts close to 40 miles per hour tomorrow morning. It'll take some time for those winds to subside. I think by tomorrow evening, you'll see less in the way of wind, but a, a very gusty morning tomorrow. The extended forecast, 61 for a high on your Saturday, 
36 Sunday morning. We've been pointing out that number because outlying areas outside of San Antonio and the Hill Country certainly could get down close to freezing. 63 Sunday, and then we're back in the warmth. And humidity next week, some more fog and drizzle, and temperatures get right back up there into the mid 70s, guys. As I've said before, you're certainly earning your salary this week. Can't keep track without you. Yeah, up and down, busy. up and down. And that also describes the Spurs season. As <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, and uh, today they are up after taking care of the Denver Nuggets last night. The Spurs led from wire to wire. And after the game, Coach Pop made sure to praise Derek White, who had a fantastic night. And in big game coverage, Shiner is headed back to state. Coming up. I thought Derek was stupendous though tonight. Derek White uh, was special tonight in a lot of different ways. Uh, made a lot of good decisions, a lot of good basketball plays that help you win. Pop is pleased with Derek White, who was the head of the snake for the Spurs last night in big board sports. So the Spurs beat the Denver Nuggets at the AT&T Center last night, leading the game from start to finish. Derek White drives baseline and scores two of his team high 23 points. He is certainly playing some great basketball. Devin Vassell returned after missing five of the last six games with a right quad contusion, and he provided a spark off the bench with nine points. He was dunking and making mid-range jumpers. Back to White, he's going to split two defenders, then throws it high off the glass for a pretty bucket. DeJounte Murray scored 20 points. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, 21. Spurs roll 123 to 111, leading by as many as 18 to snap their two-game slide. Lonnie and Derek were both in attack mode. Um, absolutely, and that just comes with a mindset, you know, being aggressive. Um, you know, I have a tendency of certain some games, you know, I'm not aggressive going downhill. I just want to be a jump shooter, and um, that's just not all my game. Um, that's something that me and Manu really been talking about, just being aggressive, being confident, um, and just playing the game. I mean, I just try to go out and be aggressive. Um, teammates doing a good job putting me in positions to succeed and just got to go out there and make plays. I'm thrilled with the 32 assists. Uh, that's, you know, really great stuff. And I thought we did as good a job as we could possibly do on Jokic. He's amazing. Good movement. Jokic had 22 points, 13 rebounds, and 10 assists for his third straight triple-double and his fifth of the season for Denver. He made eight of his 19 field goal attempts. So the same two will hoop again Saturday night, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Pop said Keldon Johnson, who didn't play last night, will not play tomorrow night again due to a twisted ankle, and he's uncertain when he will return. Shiner is heading back to the state title game in Class 2A Division 1 after getting by Timpson last night. Drew Winsky throws it to a wide open Tyler Bishop for the nine yard touchdown and the seven to nothing Comanches lead. And now to the ground, Doug Brooks, who is big and fast, is able to score from 32 yards away. He just powers over and through smaller defenders. The final from Tumball. Shiner wins 35 28 and the defending state champs are one win away from repeating. Doug had 122 yards rushing and three touchdowns and 18 carries. His brother Dalton had 234 yards on the ground with one touchdown on 33 carries. Now tonight in the Class 2A Division II State Semifinals, Falls City will play Martin Elgin at 7 p.m. Mart is 14-0, the Beavers 13-1. This is the fourth straight season. The two programs are meeting in the state semis, and the Panthers have won the three previous contests. And in the Class 4A Division II State Semis, the Quero Gobblers will face the China Spring Cougars 7 p.m. tonight at Reeves Stadium in Round Rock. The Cougars are 14 and 0. The Gobblers 13 and 1. The Gobblers are making their first semifinal appearance since 2018 when they won their fourth state championship. Well, big and fast is a good combo in football. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> All right, Larry, thanks very much. <laughs> no problem. With the holiday season in full swing, there's plenty happening around town to get uh, the biggest Grinch and the Christmas spirit even. Coming up at the next half hour, a look at some festive events and displays you can enjoy this month. And the Department of Homeland Security wants to hear from you after the break why they're now asking for public input as they try to tackle major issues along the border.
Welcome back and now to the trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter charged in the shooting death of Dante Wright. The third day getting underway after jurors heard emotional testimony from the woman who was in the car with Wright when he was shot and then tried to save his life. ABC's Raina Roy has more. Jurors hearing a third day of testimony in the high profile trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. Prosecutors calling more witnesses to the stand as they try to convince the jury okay. Potter's actions were criminal and reckless when she shot and killed 20 year old Dante Wright during a traffic stop in April. I grabbed the wrong gun! I shot him! The state playing this police video in court, showing the chaotic moments after the shooting, Wright's car crashing into another vehicle. I got one male not breathing, one female with facial lacerations. Get out of the car so we can help them! You can see Elena Albrecht Payton in the car with Wright, injured and sobbing. Who else is in the car? She had just recently started dating Wright on Thursday, emotionally recounting that fatal day. I just remember like hearing like just like the 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 boom, the bang of the gun, and I grabbed like whatever was in the car and put it on his chest. Like, I, you know, you see in movies and TV shows, I didn't know what to do. Potter says she mistook her handgun for a taser and calls the shooting a mistake. <laughs> the judge denied a request from the defense for a mistrial to two counts of manslaughter. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We are learning more about the concerns of U.S. immigration officials. He released memo, field staff supervisors detail several Armed them, including temporary facilities used to house unaccompanied migrant children. They say the shelters lack basic services and run like disaster camps. They also noted that children who stayed at the sites experienced deterioration of mental and behavioral health. Quote, the White House says it takes its responsibility for children's care seriously and follows the requirement that they place migrant children, quote, in the setting for the child's health and well-being, unquote. The Department of Homeland Security, meantime, wants the public's help. They're looking for ideas on how to prevent future family separations at the border. Public comments will be accepted until January 10th. Under the Trump administration, more than 3,000 children were separated from their families at the U.S.-Mexico border. Then, after taking office, President Biden established a federal task force to reunite those families. You can submit comments on the Federal Reserve website. The public's feedback will be used to help develop recommendations on how to prevent the federal government from implementing future acts like this as a tool to discourage border crossings. New York City has voted to give non-citizens the right to vote in local elections. The Democratic-controlled city council passed a measure yesterday known as Our City, Our Vote. It makes NYC the largest municipality in the U.S. to allow non-citizens to vote in city elections. Under the new legislation, non-citizens have to have lived in the city for at least 30 days and be legal permanent residents in the United States. That includes green card holders, individuals with workers' permits, and DACA holders. The legislation is set to go into effect on 2023, in January of 2023. Now, only a handful of jurisdictions allow non-citizens to vote. In response on Thursday, ahead of the approval vote, the Republican National Committee called the measure, quote, insane. Taking a look outside with live cam. Still murky out there in some spots, the sun out in others. I guess it would be a good idea if you're planning on sunbathing today to wear sunscreen in this heat. It's, <laughs> it's warm and you can, you can kind of almost see the humidity out there. The humidity is thick today. It's, it's going to change very quickly tonight, very abruptly with a cold front. But in the meantime, we're going to have to deal with some near record heat this afternoon. And it's building across the state. Even places like San Angelo are up to 82, 81 in Waco, 84 in Corpus Christi, 85 in Brownsville. There could be some records going down later this afternoon. That includes in our area as well. 78 here in San Antonio. A little cooler as you get into Texas Panhandle, and that's sort of the initial push there, some cooler air that will be working through the state tonight and into tomorrow. Outside, you can see the breaks in the clouds. And the uh, temperature again, 78. Dew point is at 68. That's sky high. It was steadily winds at about 10 miles per hour. 
around our area. 79 in New Braunfels, 82 in Divine, 75 Del Rio, one of the warm spots, 83 Catula. It's 85 in Beeville right now. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, still uh, an area of clouds that's kind of moving west east here, but uh, trying to break apart. It is completely cleared out west. We'll see if these clouds have any impact on temperatures, but I, I still think we make it into the 80s today here in San Antonio. 84 near record warmth, and then with the front tonight, very different tomorrow. Much cooler and windy. 61. It'll be almost jacket weather, honestly, tomorrow morning. It'll feel very different. We have to be concerned, too, about those gusty winds, gusting potentially 40 miles per hour tomorrow morning. Guys. All right, Justin, thanks very much. At least five colleges and universities are putting plans in place for COVID-19 booster mandates for their students. The school's rolling out extra requirements as protection against the virus on campus. The five colleges include the University of Notre Dame, Syracuse University in New York, Northeastern University in Boston, Smith College, and the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Notre Dame students will be required to have a booster shot by mid-spring semester. Syracuse students will have to get the shot before the start of the spring semester, so just a matter of weeks there. Coming up, San Antonio boxer Rick Medina is getting ready to headline a fight card at Wolf Stadium. Larry has more later in sports. And our community now has two great Christmas light fight champions. After the break, hear from the latest winners and what it takes to create a trophy winning display. Look at that. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Starbucks employees at a Buffalo cafe have voted yes to unionize. That is a first for the coffee chain in the U.S. Another Buffalo Starbucks, meanwhile, voted against unionizing, while a third is still waiting for their results. Three additional Buffalo Starbucks, along with another in Mesa, Arizona, also aiming to unionize. Meanwhile, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is in communication with Tesla. That over faulty autopilot cameras. This comes after the automaker made the call to replace the repeater camera in a handful of models coming from the Fremont, California plant due to faulty printed circuit boards. These faulty cameras led drivers to either see a blank or blurry video feed of their car's center display and their blind spots as well. And Ford CEO Jim Farley telling CNBC the company no longer accepting reservations for the F-150 Lightning pickup truck. Farley says the automaker has become too overwhelmed with the large number of reservations made for those vehicles, so they decided to stop after reaching 200,000 orders. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. So take a look at this. Santa Claus ditched the reindeers and sleigh, opting for a helicopter instead, all to get to some children in Guatemala a little bit earlier than December 25th. Jolly old St. Nick flew in to visit the children who are receiving cancer treatments right now. This effort made possible through a charity organization. Santa was able to hand out gifts and even the Grinch got into the holiday spirit. Do we see the Grinch? Is he making the parents? There's, There's the Grinch. The Grinch. All right. See, even it, bringing everyone together. Yeah. It's a truce. Santa Claus also making appearances here in San Antonio. In fact, you can watch a movie with him. Santicos Entertainment in Cibolo showing Dr. Seuss, the Grinch, later this month. During the special showing, Santa Claus will be there. And since he loves a good photo op, he'll even take some pictures. You can find more information on ksat.com. Also on our website, the San Antonio Public Library is holding several free and festive events. Including some opportunities to make holiday crafts and gifts. Take a look at the list of events on ksat.com. You'll need to register if you want to take part in some of these activities. Well, a local family doing South Texas proud, not just by bringing holiday cheer to the community, but they took home a big trophy for their holiday display. The Inahosa family and Bernie winning episode five of the great Christmas light fight here on ABC. The family able to show off their trophy to us this week. They tell us the magical display took a lot of work to put together. 
So how does an already busy family of five make that happen? I get out of work in, in the evenings, on the weekends, and uh, you know m my school district were off for the entire week of Thanksgiving. And uh, from that Friday to Sunday, it's nonstop um, every day. So we get help, little elves. This little elf right here helps a little bit, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, so pretty much just every waking moment is on lights and on the, the details. <laughs> Truly a labor of love there. The Inahosa's display is at 140 Shadow Knolls in Bernie. There aren't the only local winners. The Wilson family and Windcrest were also featured on the show. They also won. The Inahosa family says the Wilsons reached out to them to congratulate them. The winners hope to meet in person and tour each other's displays soon. The Inahosa is doing that in three days. That's impressive. Oof. Super wow. impressive. And so kind of impressive is how warm it is for this time of year. Can't get over it. It just feels like summer or something. It makes, does. Makes that feet even more impressive that they did it in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a process. 78 degrees so far today, 71 the low this morning. Just to give you some perspective, the record low maximum is, six, is 67. If we don't fall below that number by midnight, we'll be setting records for low maximum. The average is 43. So we're running about 28 degrees above average for the low temperature. Pretty incredible. Record is 85. That was set back in 1939. That is also in jeopardy today. Obviously, the record low is not. That was set back in 1978. We'll talk about all this heat and whether or not it's going to be coming back into the forecast. Coming up. So you could mow the grass, mm -hmm. seasonal for that. Mm -hmm. What else is the weather good for today? Just sitting in your porch and yeah. sipping something, or a walk or something. And we know yeah. it's all Lemonade temporary though. Iced tea and mint juleps. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 warm. I mean, there's no two ways around it. It could be worse, I suppose. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we had we went through all that mess in February. So there's that trying to look at the positive side of things. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's overused a lot. We say roller coaster ride, but it really is here because think about it. We're kind of at the peak, ready to go down that hill. By tomorrow, we're down into the low 60s, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so it'll be a, a dramatic change, but we go right back up um, into the 70s next week. And in December, we would expect this. We have a lot of up and downs because we get fronts coming through. It's just that we've been a little bit warmer than average. Uh, and these fronts haven't really packed a punch. So that's kind of been the difference here. There is still going to be some fluctuations. Uh, but yes, we will get a cool down coming up tomorrow. Right now, we're looking at uh, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies. Temperature is at 78 degrees at the airport. Southerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. That dew point, man, that's what hurts. It's a 68, just so sticky out there. 75 Canyon Lake, 79 in New Braunfels, 77 Comfort, 77 right now in Bandera. And you're at 84 in Carrizo Springs, 83 in Catula. And the, the warm spots there, Pleasanton and Beeville, already at 85. So it's possible we could get close to 90 this afternoon, if you can believe that. Dew point tracker shows that, yes, it will be awful humid today, but that humidity gets swept away by that front. So it's very dry Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday, the humidity rises very quickly, and then we're back into the humid weather by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Satellite picture shows that, uh, yes, we still do have some of those clouds working through Bear County, but everybody else, for the most part, is now looking at quite a bit of sun, which is why those temperatures are trending upwards. Big picture here, dynamic storm system moving through the middle of the country. We've got some showers out ahead of it, some snow on the back side of it. And as this system moves into that deep moisture that's getting shoved northward, there's going to be some severe weather today. And there is actually a moderate risk now of strong storms uh, right there along the Mississippi River as you get into Memphis up towards St. Louis. So this is going to be the problem area today and there could be quite a few storms this afternoon and this evening, some of which could be strong to severe. Now we're on the tail end of things down here and in fact we are not looking for any severe weather in South Texas. We're just too far displaced from the energy, but there could be a broken line of showers, maybe a thunderstorm east of San Antonio overnight. So we're talking Midnight to maybe 4 a.m. That possibility is there. Don't expect much rain. By tomorrow morning, that front will have moved through. It's gusty, it's cooler, and we could see some big time wind gusts up around 40 miles per hour or so. 
Uh, by midday, clouds try to clear out a little bit, and we'll see mostly sunny skies, I think, by the afternoon and evening. Wind gusts, we talked about it, 40 miles per hour, 7 a.m., still pretty strong, 9 a.m. By midday, we'll start to see the wind subside just a little bit, and it will probably take until late tomorrow afternoon for those winds to really calm down. And once they do, we get clear skies Sunday morning, then we'll be looking at some pretty chilly temperatures. So 61 tomorrow, 36 Sunday morning. Keep in mind the outlying areas around San Antonio and the whole country could get down to freezing. Something to watch closely. 63 Sunday during the day, sunny, beautiful day. Moisture returns on Monday. That brings in cloud cover. And then by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking at those damp mornings and kind of warm, humid afternoons, it looks like. Kind of what we're dealing with today, maybe just not quite as warm into the upper 70s next week, guys. Thanks. We're going to win this game. Um, I'm confident in that. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy with some words that will likely motivate the Washington football team and big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Head coach Mike McCarthy is back with the Dallas Cowboys after missing the past 10 days due to COVID-19 protocols. He returned yesterday. He says December football defines your season, and so far they're off to a good start after beating the Saints 27-17 to open the month. He also says they will beat Washington, and he's confident in that. And when it comes to bulletin board material, coach says he doesn't spend any time Time on it because it's a waste of time so he's not worried after saying they will win this game what am I supposed to say uh, yeah I mean I, I mean I, I, we fully I fully expect to win every game I've ever competed in I mean that's that's what sports is all about that's what the NFL I, I trust me I understand how hard it is um, they're working hard we're working hard but yeah we, we we're clearly planning on going to you know to Washington to win the game I mean there's, there's no doubt about that Coach confirmed that running back Tony Pollard suffered a foot sprain on a 58-yard touchdown run versus the Saints last week. He says the plan is to get Tony through this week with the projection to play him Sunday at Washington. It's official. Tyrod Taylor is out in Houston in favor of rookie quarterback Davis Mills. Head coach David Coley making the announcement this morning. Taylor suffered an injury to his non-throwing hand Sunday that had Mills enter in the third quarter of the Texans 31-0 loss against the Colts. Coach says Taylor didn't like the news, but the NFL is a production business, so he's going with the rook. I guess everybody want to know who the quarterback's going to be on Sunday, and <laughs> it'll be Davis. Davis will be the quarterback on Sunday. Well, I felt like he gives us the best chance to win. And going forward, he'll be the quarterback. Going forward for the rest of the season? Yes. Linebacker Zach Cunningham has gone from last place to first place in the AFC South, waived by the Texans. He was claimed by the Tennessee Titans yesterday. Fight night is coming to Nelson Wolf Stadium this weekend. Tomorrow night, Lanier High School grad Rick Medina will headline the fights at the Wolf when he faces Dallas native Oscar Mojica. We caught up with Medina yesterday as he wrapped up camp and battles in his first fight in San Antonio since 2019. Uh, yeah, it's very special. You know, it's here in my hometown, so my family, you know, whoever supports me gets to come out and see me live. Uh, this fight's very important, and like I said, every fight is very important because it's just going to get me closer to the bigger stage, bigger fights. Medina, also known as El Castigo for the punishment, will look to go 4-0 in 2021. The weigh-in is today at 3 p.m. at the Wolf and open to the public. Now here's how you can get your tickets to a fight night. TMB Promotions Boxing Saturday Night Wolf Stadium. Doors open at 6. First fight, 7.30. You can get your tickets at samissions.com. Is he going to box in those shoes? Too? <laughs> those are pretty sweet. Uh, those were sweet, right? All right. Big weekend. Thanks, Rick. Yep. Larry, and we'll be right back. <laughs>